awesome, good life, honey. Trust me on this one. You don't want to miss this program. Right now, call some people because we've got an awesome testimony. Amen. About 10 seconds, Bobby Petroselli and Simon Cowell gave a standing ovation along with all the other judges and everybody that listened to Lily McLeod sing Alabaster Box. People got saved, called in. She is our guest today. Bobby, it's going to be awesome. I can't awesome. wait. Awesome, awesome. And Bobby Petroselli, as you can tell by the name, he's a paisano. He's Italiano. one of my <laughs> friends. So you are just going to be blessed. And what he's been through and what God has taken him through, uh, oh, yeah. you are really going to be blessed today. And we're going to start off by Lily singing for us. Alabaster Box. Alabaster Box. She stumbled through the tears and made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger. Heard folks whisper, there's no place here for your kind. But still she came. Through the shame that fleshed her face Until at last she knelt before his feet And though she spoke no words Everything she said was heard As she poured her love for the master From her box of alabaster To pour my parade's own head like oil for Mary's alabaster bag. Don't be angry if I washed his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. Weren't there the night he found me? You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. And you don't know the cause of the oil in my alabaster bag. The way life used to be I was a prisoner To the sin that had me bound And I spent my life Pouring my life without measure Into a little treasure box I thought I had found came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his chance. So now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven and that's why Like oil 
Thank you, Lily. Mm. And our guest today, Bobby Petroselli. And uh, I've known a lot of Bobby Petroselli's growing up in Jersey, but uh, never met this one before. <laughs> and I just want to say, because we've got so many things to talk about, but I want to talk about your uncle, Rico. I enjoyed his playing as he played baseball. Well, he played 15 years for the Boston Red Sox. I know. And I tell people all the time, it's a miracle. One of the miracles I'm alive today is I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, God's country, and I was a Boston Red Sox fan. So that's a miracle in and of itself. It's like Johnny Cash sang a song about a boy named Sue. I'm in Brooklyn and I'm a Red Sox fan. So it was a miracle, but it was awesome. It was awesome following him. It was such a special treat to have my father's younger brother be such a superstar for the Red Sox for many years. Yeah. Well, we've got other things to talk about. And he made you a star also how you ever got through that part of your life where you lost your life, your wife, sorry, where you lost your wife. Um, that was an incredible story. And the book, 10 Seconds, will change your life forever. Now, 10 seconds really you can change it in five seconds, but it takes 10 seconds. <laughs> well, I, I talk a lot about really what I'm saying there, Bob, is growing up in Brooklyn, I would always hear the phrase and the expression, take life one day at a time. And I'm not trying to be facetious, but that's wrong. Life is not one day at a time. Life is one moment at a time. Yes. And literally, good, bad, right, or wrong, lives are changed. Lives are infected. Lives are impacted one moment at a time. Right. And going through this tragedy that I went through, when people would say to me, take life one day at a time, I'd look at them like, what? I can't even envision getting through the next five minutes. But I learned through the spirit and the power of God. If I take my life one step, one moment, 10 seconds at a time, through the power, and I need to stress this, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I would be able to find that victory. It may not seem like it right now, but somewhere that victory is going to manifest itself, and I will be able to walk into that victory of experiencing such a great tragedy. Hmm. Now, I have to tell you, I read that book before, and yet I cried through it, parts of this, and I just couldn't imagine how you made it through. Well, you know, Bob, people need to understand, us Italians, we're not afraid to cry. 
I mean, I cry at commercials. I'm here ready welling up as Lily was singing <laughs> I was because too. the power of the spirit that is radiating through her talent and anointing. And she understands a simple principle about life. We all have gifts and gifts are not those that we hold on to. A true gift is a gift that you're willing to give away because God has created us with these gifts to give away. But, you know, I'm here ecstatic to know that through the power of God, losing my wife, who I met at Old Roberts University, I was from Brooklyn, New York. She was from Houston, Texas. I said words like, use guys. She said, y'all. We ever <laughs> thought if we have kids, they're going to say, yous all. <laughs> and we didn't say yins like they do back when my dad grew up in Pittsburgh in that area, or you ins. But we would say, use guys. And Ava and I connected. I moved to Texas. I was part of an amazing church, a real small church you might have heard of, called Lakewood church in the yes. Houston area. I had the privilege of going to Old Roberts with all the Osteen kids. I got to know them. Ava's best friends with, with Tamara Osteen was her best friend. And I got to be planted in, in uh, Lakewood Church under John and Dodie Osteen. Amazing people. As a teacher and a coach, I traveled this one Thursday night, approximately 100 miles round trip, coached, came back home, hadn't seen Ava since early that morning, talked to her a little bit about the day's events, go to sleep, and I wake up approximately one hour later, not realizing within one moment, within 10 seconds, my life has now been changed forever when a drunk driver traveling 70 miles an hour rips his truck through my wall, runs me over completely, flips me up on the hood of the truck, the truck lands on Ava, throws me through the next wall, and I end up in the dining room window. Ava ends up underneath the truck. It was expressed and explained to me when the truck landed on her body, it knocked all the air out of her body, and I didn't find this out till I got to the hospital that my wife of two and a half years, who I thought I would be spending the rest of my life with, was tragically taken when the sheets and the mattress wrapped around her face and her body so tight, physically nothing happened to her, she suffocated. But within that one moment when I heard that, I knew the life that I knew up to that moment will never, ever, ever, ever be the same again. Yes, wow. Bobby, I would like to say this. You had a background that helped you get through all this. Uh, would you just go back a little bit and talk about the way you were raised and your faith and the faith of your mother and your grandmother? I learned at a very early age. I grew up in an Italian Pentecostal church. Um, I learned at a very early age that there is a God who loves and adores me. There's a God who values me. I love to take things like John 3, 16, and not I'm replacing it, but put the word value instead of love for one reason. God values me so much because he would not send his son to die for junk. That's how valuable I am in the sight of God. I was created in his image and built inside of me is the spirit of God living living in me. So when we all walk in here together, we bring that spirit. I learned that as a young age. And when I may make a mistake and I may go wrong or something bad may happen in my life, that spirit starts screaming out immediately, recalculating, redirecting, repositioning. I want to get you back on the path which the thief sought out to steal, kill, and to destroy. I'm going to recalculate and I'm going to turn into something good. And that's even something John Osteen told me when I went through this. Bobby, that which the devil sought out to destroy. And we want to phrase that real strong. The yeah. devil sought out to destroy. God did not bring havoc and tribulation into my life. The word teaches that. But in the middle of that, he's given me victory and power to overcome tribulation, to recalculate and get back on the right path. And growing up in the home I did, I always tell people all the time, forget the fear of God. There was the fear of Attilio Nunzio Petroselli. <laughs> My dad had the quickest belt in Brooklyn. I could be in the kitchen reaching in the cookie jar before dinner when I'm not supposed to. And all of a sudden I'd hear that Clint Eastwood music play. <laughs> And the belt would come around the corner, slap my hand and go right back in like nothing ever happened. But I knew that, you know what, there was a certain set of rules and organization and understanding that I had to walk. But in the middle of all that, one of the greatest things I learned growing up in the home I did with my family and in the church I grew up in, the power of letting go, the power of forgiveness, the power of not living in my past. All I have is this present moment. And God's given me grace and power for this present moment. And very simply, the morning 
that I had gone through this tragedy was somewhere around one o'clock in the morning. Pastor John and Dodie Osteen, and Houston is a huge city. They drove clear across Houston to come to where I was in the hospital, about 80 miles. And they walk in about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and they come up to me, and Pastor John looked me in the face and said, Bobby, there's just things in this world we don't understand. There is an enemy that's always out to destroy us, but God will get the victory in this and give you the power to overcome. And then Dodie looked me in the face, Pastor Dodie looked me in the face and said, Bobby, you do know you're going to have to forgive this man. And I said, Pastor Dodie, I said, I know I will get to that place, but here's the key. Last night, two hours into Ava being killed, I said a very simple prayer. And I knew where that prayer came from, not from my humanness, but from the power of the Spirit. And I said, God, you're living inside of me. And I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, the only way I could ever think to work through this, to overcome this, or to even have victory to recalculate is by your Spirit to give me the strength to forgive. Because your word teaches me that I can forgive by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. Wow. Amen. Now we're going to have to recalculate. <laughs> <laughs> and because we want to hear the rest of the story because it's such an amazing story yeah, what God has done in your life. And we've got a few minutes to start the story. Um, you ended up Finally, dating a woman I that met, you never thought you would? I never thought I'd have a second chance. But you know, in the middle of tragedy, the day that I was burying Ava, this was the beginning and the start of it more than ever. All these little moments that led up to this. The day I'm burying Ava and saying my final goodbye, knowing that she's in eternity with heaven, but right now I'm weeping. It says to weep and mourn with those who weep and mourn, rejoice with those who rejoice. You don't rejoice with somebody who's mourning. Rejoicing will come in the morning, but right now I'm mourning. Well, long story short, the day I'm burying Ava, I look in the cemetery. It's the most powerful thing I've ever saw in my life. 1,100 students from the school that I taught at. God sent them to say, Coach, we love you. You loved on us. You sowed into our life. We are not going to let you give up. And who would have ever dreamed three and a half years after I lost Ava in Long Island, New York, I would walk down the aisle and here was the kicker. I met Susie, who I am now married to, for 25 years. Wow. 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 And as you and I were talking in the green room, I can't believe I put up with her for 20 No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> you know what they always say, the woman says she's been putting up with the man. But I meet her a little over a year after Ava was killed. The recalculation is happening. I'm dating her three or four months and I go over her house this one Thursday night. She hands me this big bag of gifts. I said, what are these for? She goes, you know what today is. And I'm thinking, okay, did I just miss our three month, four week, five day, six hours, seven minute anniversary? She goes, no. I know today if Ava wasn't killed 20 months ago, today would have been your fourth wedding anniversary to Ava. I thought you were hurting, so I bought you these gifts to let you know I love you so much. And I learned one thing living in the South, that girl melted my butter quicker than any microwave ever would. <laughs> On that day, I knew that something great that God was going to take and do this. Well, a year or so later, three and a half years after my tragedy, I walk down the aisle and Susie becomes my wife. And 25 years later, we have two amazing sons. One's 22, one's 18. And because of her support, I've been traveling all over this nation, speaking hope and joy and peace over the lives of people. And every opportunity God gives me, the availability to share his hope and love with the hurting of this world. Wow. Wow. That is wonderful. Oh, we're going to take a break and... When we come back, Lily McLeod's going to sing again, Yeshua, the other part of me. To contact Bobby Petroselli and to find out more about his book, 10 Seconds Will Change Your Life, please call 1-800-547-7933. You can also send an email to bobby at 10seconds.org. To find out more about Bobby's ministry, please log on to his website at 10seconds.org.
Joshua, ever since I have been with you All of me seems so very, very brand new But I didn't know it, know it when you touched me I became a part of you and you became a part of me and I love you Yes, my dreams, my dreams seem clearer now La -di -da -di -da 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 -da. They all have so much meaning now But I didn't know, Lord, when you touched me I have no doubt, I got no doubt I know what I found When I found you and I love you Blowing across the desert bay But I didn't know, Lord, when you hold me All of my fears, my fears they, disappear. they disappear But at last I know You are the one who loves me could tell that came from within. What a testimony how the Holy Spirit is the one that she needs. And by the way, that song, I believe it's that song, is making its debut today all across the country. So if you're watching out in Washington, you may have heard it first right here. <laughs> We don't know where you're watching, but we appreciate Lily so much. Yes. 
Now, Bobby, we uh, went through a hard time. And how you, did you make it through? There had to be a secret. Well, here's the true gospel of Jesus Christ. It's found in Luke 4. The Messiah is here. I've come to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, to give sight to the blind, and to declare the favor of the Lord. Paraphrasing a little, but here's the key. In this world, the enemy's about one thing, bringing pain, bringing death, bringing suffering. He wants to break our heart. Well, Christ understood that. And the key is this in this world. The enemy's about breaking hearts and people's hearts are broken. Well, here's what happens is when my broken heart is not healed, I become captive to that broken heart. My sin literally comes out of my broken heart because desperately all of us have one goal and desire in this world. We want to be loved. We want to be valued. We want to feel we matter and we have importance. Christ brings that. I know we had talked about this earlier. I've had the privilege of speaking all over this world, primarily to young people and those who work with young people. And the biggest thing I go after with young people, and you even have a show here on CTN, I love it, one of my favorite shows, Know the Cause with Doug Hoffman. Most people don't understand even why they're sinning, what's driving them to do the things they're doing. They're broken heart. That's the main cause. That's the reason why we go down the path we do and the flesh feeds into that. God wants to heal that broken heart. And when people begin to understand where their wounds, where their hurt, where their pain came from, because pain has a message. And the message of pain that the enemy works through is, is shame, condemnation. You're not good enough. You can't. God's punishing you. Look how bad you are. You're worthless. Well, you know what's awesome? Every one of us have different fingerprints and the fingerprints are God's tattoos on our bodies and on our lives that I've created and I've destined you for a purpose. And though the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy, I'm going to recalculate and bring hope and life through that tragedy, turn the tragedy into a triumph and bring hope to the world. Amen. Now you have two boys. I have a 22 year old and an 18 year old. All by Susie. Susie, Ava and I had no children together. Yes, Susie and I have two boys. And tell me about them. Well, my son Alec just graduated. Do they ever listen to you? Uh, usually they do, most of the time. But that's that old adage that sometimes, you know, dad can sow seeds, water seeds. The Holy Spirit's the one who brings the harvest. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings wisdom. And the only time when my flesh gets in the way... You know, and when my own fear gets in the way, because that's how the enemy tries to drive. Instead of saying, Father, I pray over them. I declare over them. You know what's so awesome about the Jewish people? They understood the power of the blessing. They and they proclaim that blessing over their children yes. all the time. They spoke it. There is power of life and death in this wonderful things yeah. here. In this wonderful tongue right here. There's power to speak life. There's power to speak death. And I do all that I can, as often as I can, to pray and speak life over my boys. But my older son, Alec, just graduated college. He just graduated University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. He was a football player there, is going into the area of exercise science. My younger son, Aaron, goes to Northside Christian here locally. And one thing scares me about Aaron here in Florida, we live in Florida and he plays ice hockey in Florida. It's huge here in Florida. It's amazing. But I know the calling of God is on both of their lives and they both love God and that's the most important thing. And I want to ask, do you raise them the way your parents raised you? Because I was so impressed at the beginning of the book how your parents raised you. Well, they raised you right. I, I always knew, you know what? I always knew that there was a consequence for my negative behavior. Right. I always knew that. And as a kid and growing up, when I grew up, the worst punishment to me in the world, forget the spanking. Don't send me to my room, please. I wanted to be outside. Now kids want to go to their room with all the video games and right. all the other stuff they do with their cell phones and everything else. I wanted to be outside and I would beg them, you can beat the living daylights out of me. Please don't make me stay in my room. I want to go outside and play in the trees and play in the streets and just hang out with my friends outside. The worst punishment for me was going to my room. I love being outside, but I always knew that there would be a consequence um, to my disruptive behavior and I'm going to go wrong and I'm going to make some mistakes, but I knew that, you know what, 
as I shared earlier, forget the fear of God. There was a fear of my dad knowing that, you know what, there would be repercussions for the wrong that I did. Yeah. And I understood those boundaries and that organization and that order that was established. Mm. Have you what preached is- that today? <laughs> uh, it doesn't go too far among the secular people. Well, he- here's a simple principle where I try to come from. But listen, we've got about two minutes and okay. we-, we want you to lead people to Jesus too. Remember that. I understand this very simple thing. People desperately have the desire to be loved, to be valued, to feel they're important. God already established that by creating us in the first place, number one. But number two, confirming that by sending his son. And then his son said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will go to the father and greater things shall you do because that which has empowered me, I will send now through the Holy Spirit to empower you. And I want to say to even all of those that are watching, I don't know what you have been through. I have never walked in your shoes, but I know this one thing. In this world, a broken heart and pain is inevitable. God did not bring that upon you. The enemy, the devil, the thief brought that upon you. But God gave his son on your behalf because he loves, he treasures, and values you. And I want to make it very simple. The only one who could transform you, the only one who can heal you, the only one who can deliver you and set you free and let you know how valuable and incredible you are is God through his son and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to pray a very simple prayer over you right now that you would open up your heart, hear the voice of God that is speaking to you because he loves you, he adores you, and wants to make his home alive inside of you. So pray with me, please, very simply. Father, to all those who are watching, hearts have been broken, lives have been ruined, People have fallen short. People live with unforgiveness. I pray above all else that your Holy Spirit, the only one who can do it, would transform the lives of those watching today. May their eyes be open, their ears be open, their hearts be healed, and may the Spirit of God that is alive in this world come to reside in their heart. Holy Spirit, you will lead them into repentance. You will lead them into confession. We pray right now that they would be open to it and that you would transform their life even as you transformed Lily's life and those watching her show, her on X Factor. Their lives were changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Wow. You know, if you've accepted Christ, if you've just, for the first time in your life, said, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, you're in for a ride. He'll do incredible things in your life, even as he has with Bobby Petroselli. God bless you. And we're going to take another break. And when we come back, Lily is going to sing for us, Running Back to You. To contact Good Life hosts Bob and Jane DeAndre, please send an email to deandre at ctntv.net. You can also write to The Good Life at Christian Television Network, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. To find out more online, please log on to www.ctnonline.com and click on The Good Life. Christian Television Network is all about proclaiming the gospel. All over the world. CTN is about bringing you exciting guests. Who are making a difference in the kingdom. At CTN, we're about being here for you anytime, day or night. When 
when I do things my way, like turning my back on you, the one who loved me first, having my own desires and renewing my worldly thirst. You told me you loved me. I should make up my mind. You telling me, come on back, but I keep wasting time, feeling so very weak. Yeah, you say I can be strong, but I feel I've gone too far. She has got some songs in her repertoire, and they're not really secular. Like I think she loves to sing gospel. And uh, we're going to ask Lily to come over, and we're going to talk to her. Lily? Oh. How are you? Hi there. So good to see so you. So good to have you, Lily. Thank you. 
God bless you. That takes a lot out of you. Oh. <laughs> well, she puts everything yes. into it. <laughs> and it's tough not to cry because there's a story, you know, behind all of that. And what there is, is that? There is a story behind that. <sighs> what would is you share the story? <laughs> uh, I, I would say this, don't, don't try to run from God when he's chasing you, because you're just running in circles. <laughs> Bump your head up against the wall and run in circles, you're going to... It's just, I've been doing, uh, I've come out of the secular world, music, and I, I actually loved every minute of it, had a lot of fun. And um, I've just gone through a lot in my life. And sometimes you're searching for the answer, and it could just be standing right there in front of you, and you just don't see it because you're just looking for answers in all the wrong places. And God was just standing there saying, come on, come on. I've got everything you need, everything you want, all your desires. I have your healing. I have, I have everything you need. Just come on. And I'm so grateful that God waited patiently. You know, he just waited there for me. And I'm just, I'm grateful that now that I'm, I can use this, this uh, gift that he gave me to, for for his glory and to maybe change uh, the minds of some of the children that are out there making all the wrong decisions. I, I think a lot of kids, a lot of uh, our younger youth, we think it's boring to know Christ. Yeah. But I found that he has quite a sense of humor. Amen. And and it's it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. Too, Look at it? all of us. Yeah. A it's a lot of fun. <laughs> My life is so complete. It was a big empty hole. And, and you don't know why you're empty, but you're, you're empty because you don't have the one that made you. Mm. You know, your creator, you have to be connected to your creator. How did you meet him? I'm sorry? How did you meet him? How did I meet Jesus? Yes. He not he, he, him he, with you? You know, I got to tell you, I, had to, I really had to hit rock bottom before I opened my eyes. I've always been there, but not holding on you know, uh, do something wrong, well, the Lord, will, the Lord will forgive me, and I just kind of went through life this way. Uh, but I actually lost the use of my legs. I couldn't walk. I had a, a period of time where I couldn't walk. And uh, when I was healed from that, about a week later, I lost the use of my left arm. And uh, during this time, I was going through a really bad um, uh, relationship, very, very, um, I'm, I'm a survivor from physical uh, and mental abuse. And all of this was happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when you're going through some, some, sometimes when it's like that, who can you reach out to? Who's going to fix it? Only, only God, only yes. God. And I just started reaching out and praying and, and then, uh, I don't know, something just started happening inside of me. I actually, um, came to the, uh, to the conclusion that I was going to be this way. I, I, I became fine with the fact that I wouldn't be able to use the arm. And I think after that is when he decided to, to heal me. I, I wasn't angry anymore. It's just, okay, if this is what it is, this is what it is, you know. And I just started uh, learning him, and it, it turned into a love affair. I, I mean, it really did. I, I, I always say that Sometimes you're on your knees and you're praying and something in the back of your head will say, get up, you don't mean what you're saying. Just get up, you, you know you're, you're, you're lying. But I've learned to keep saying it. Even when I didn't know what it meant to say, I love you, Jesus, I would still say it. I love you, I love you. And one day I woke up and I really, I said it and I really realized that I really love him. And it's just been a love fest. It's been a love fest ever since. I, I thought maybe it's, you had a grandmother that prayed you through or uh, well you mom. know my, my my mother and my my father was a preacher my mom yeah, I grew up in that whole um, oh. that whole environment but I was I was a rebel I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to get on the motorcycle and you know and, and do my own thing so they the prayers kept me you know I'm I've been in a many situations where I shouldn't be here today really should have been gone and I know it was the prayers my mother's prayers and and my father's prayers that uh, that the Lord was merciful and he he kept me. He had a plan. Amen. All this time, I'm the one that was confused. He had it straight the whole time. He had a plan for me, and uh, and now I'm 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 living it. I have my um, my CD. I'm working on it now. I'm coming from the, the secular into the gospel. It's, it's difficult to get people to to take you serious when you're coming from that that world uh, in, in the Christian market. But thank, 
thank God that you could feel my spirit and you invited me on the show. I'm so Amen. grateful. Um, the there's two songs out. One was called What About the Beautiful Children? We were trying to bring awareness to people to if you're spending your money on something, how about how about spend a little on a on a child and and help for better quality of life? And uh, the new one was released today, and it's it's called The Other Part of Me. And this was written by Jerry Cummings from uh, Hell Melvin and the Blue Notes. I'm sure you guys, <laughs> this is like yeah. old school music back in the day. So uh, the, the words are really beautiful. It's, it's on iTunes. It's on Amazon. Every digital download. Uh, it's hitting all the radio stations. And this, oh, is, this is a song that says th how I feel. This is the, the other side of me, which was there the whole time. Yeah. I'm just coming in touch with. It's the Lord. And I, I feel brand new. And I, I, I really don't feel like the same person. I, I know that I am. But you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's, it's a different feeling. It's like I was just born or something. Yeah. Every day is bright. Even in the bad times, I know he's going to fix it. Yeah. I know it like I know it like I know it. When you were on the X Factor, had you made the decision to follow the Lord at that time? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I went on that show to to say, you know what, God has something to say too. And I know it wasn't the popular thing to do. Uh, in fact, when I got on that show, I actually brought a gown with me uh, so I can sing Alabaster Box. They, they asked for six songs and they lost all of my songs except for Alabaster Box. <laughs> See, God was in the plan. All of the songs except for Alabaster Box. And so I brought a gown hoping that I'd get a chance to do that song. And I, was, I, I did my audition in a cat suit for a rock and roll song. And um, they said, uh, no, I'm sorry, but you have to wear that same outfit that you did the audition on. And I said, I can't go and sing Alabaster Box in a cat suit. This is not going to work. So I went in the bathroom and I had a meeting with God. Me and God, we were talking. I said, Lord, you know. And I came out of that bathroom with, you go out there, girl, and do your job. Don't worry. I have a plan. I know what I'm doing. I was okay with that. I came out of there and I had bronchitis, by the, by the way. Oh. Couldn't even, but I, I don't know. There was a child inside of me. I'm telling you, a child emerged and it was like Muhammad Ali. I just wanted to come out there and get the message across. I thought when I got on the stage, I'd have a couple of seconds to minister. I didn't have to. They cut a lot of the, the program out and many people were ministering God is here. God is here. Wow. They were saying it. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we want to hear you sing again. Yeah, testimony. Ah. Yeah. What are you going to sing? Well, my daughter wrote this song for me. I said, I, I want to describe how I feel about God. He's so everything for me. What, what, write me a song. And she wrote a song called Glitter Like Gold. Oh. Wow. We can't wait That's to hear awesome. it. Okay. <laughs> Glitter Like Gold. Wow, what a testimony. Wow. Amen. And that's the what Jesus does. You know, and that's, that, to me, what was so awesome about everything she shared, it all comes back to the transforming power of the Spirit. And even though the network thought that they weren't going to do certain things, the Spirit of God's going to come through. <laughs> that is the key in everything. That's right. That is so true. Yeah, she, she wanted the Spirit of God. That's right. And it came through. Amen. Mm. Wow. Well, I think Lily's ready. One more minute. Oh, with us. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you know, can I share something real quick done. about all of us? Yeah. We all have different diversity in life. And here's what's so cool when I share about people with prejudice and racism and issues. What they're saying when they deal with prejudice and racism issue, issues, they're saying, God, you messed up. Everybody's supposed to look like me, talk like me, act like me, walk like me, be like me. Uh uh. That's what the body of Christ is. We're all different shades, right. parts, abilities. And here's the kicker. Every one of us have the spirit burning in us. We're like those charcoal briquettes that you barbecue with. And when we line up together, the fire becomes greater. Mm. Yes, amen. When we line up together. <laughs> we line up together. That's the key. Lining up together, the fire gets bigger. When the briquette is by itself, it burns, but not as great as when we come together. The power in each and one of us through the spirit becomes greater and greater and greater. That's why the unity of the body is so vital. The unity is so vital. 
You know, that's that reminds me of a story. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, there was a pastor that had a man that just quit coming to his church. So we went to visit him, and he said, you know, brother so-and-so, I'm just missing you. And he said, pastor, I don't have to go to church to be saved. He said, you know, brother, that is true. But he had a fire going, <laughs> and coal in the fire. And he said, but can I just share with you what can happen when you quit the fellowship and you don't go to be with your brothers and sisters in Christ? And so he went over to the man's fireplace, and all of the coal there together was just bright, burning, fire hot. But he took one out and laid it aside by itself. And you know, the fire went out. I mean, you know, the burning, the that ember went out. And it was eventually cold. And you know that can happen. And that's why we need each other. Because when my pilot light gets dim, if I line up with you guys, all of a sudden I could be having a bad week. But the spirit in you inspires the spirit in me. Yeah. And the key is the togetherness. When Jesus hung on the cross, he didn't set up all these divisions. If unity was not so vital to the kingdom of God, Satan wouldn't be working so hard against it. He knows the power we have when we come together. Yeah. That's the message I've been hearing. Recently, though, oh, many times in the past I've heard it, but recently I've been hearing we've got to come together and knock down all those walls and we'll see a great awakening. Amen. And Lily Lily's McLeod, got to sing. <laughs> Lord, you glitter like gold.
you 